Okay. <laughs> we put the like bananas. <laughs> this is my what I eat in a week video. A lot of this was filmed before quarantine, but some of it was filmed after. And I'm going to take you through a classic week of what I eat as a college student living off campus and just the dishes I like to keep on repeat. Over time, I've carefully refined the list of dishes I eat to overlap in a lot of the same ingredients so I can have a simple shopping list, save money, while still having a great variety of dishes and choices. So I'm really excited to share with you guys what I eat in a week, and without further ado, let's get into it. First up is Greek yogurt. I use the Faye brand, 0-2%, just plain. It's my favorite brand. Then I top it up with some frozen raspberries, frozen because they're cheaper and don't go bad. I use a ton. <laughs> and then I put a little bit of honey to sweeten it up, and that's it. It's just super easy, quick, convenient. It's a great source of protein. Greek yogurt's a great source of protein, and it's super delicious. It's definitely the one I eat the most in the morning. And it's also really great with pomegranate seeds and other, other fruit, so it's great to mix it up. You should definitely try it. Next up, if I have the time, I love to make smoothie bowls. I use the same frozen raspberries, also frozen strawberries, any other frozen berries, some coconut uh, almond milk. I like that blend. gives it a little bit more heart to it with the coconut milk. I add Greek yogurt, just making sure I have enough liquids. Then I blend it all together using my Oster blender. You can just get it on Amazon. And then I like to top it up with some fruit. Some sunflower seeds, flax seeds, sliced almonds, walnuts, you know, all that jazz. Stuff that's good for you. Antioxidants or, you know, omega-3s, omega-6s, protein, etc. And um, it's just super delicious and also really pretty. Next up is something I have less frequently, um, an omelet. So I like to use spinach, uh, tomatoes, sometimes cheese, and turkey. Um, just basically ingredients that you'll see I use in some other dishes will go really well in this omelet. And it's just a good source of protein, but be careful not to have too many eggs because it's not good for your cholesterol. Okay, this doesn't really count as a food, but I didn't know where else to put it. Coffee. I wanted to share with you guys how I make coffee. So I have this espresso machine and over time it saved me a lot of money compared to going with Starbucks. You know, if you go to Starbucks five days a week for like 40 weeks in a school year, you're spending like a thousand dollars there. So one way to cut back on that is having your own coffee machine. I'm really into the Nespresso machine. I definitely recommend that over Keurig. Do not get a Keurig, get a Nespresso. The quality is just so much better. So you can make your own espresso shots with it. So there I use two espresso shots. I bought these syrups. Um, they're just like $10 for a huge, huge one. And just a little goes a really long way. So they can last for a very long time. And then, so I usually put a little bit of vanilla or caramel, depending on what I like. I add some of that, um, either normal milk or that almond milk or almond coconut milk into a steamer I got along with an espresso machine. So I can do cold foaming or hot foaming. Here I'm doing cold foaming to make a kind of cappuccino or latte. This can make a really good quality drink that will eliminate any need for you to really go to Starbucks or buy coffee out. So yeah, here's my at-home Starbucks. I topped it with um, some coconut whipped cream that I found at Trader Joe's that is so delicious. So I got really into making like a coconut themed coffee. But depending on my mood, I also really enjoy drinking it just black. The coffee is so good. Overall, that concludes breakfast. A star goes to Greek yogurt for being my favorite and most frequent. It's just super easy to make in the morning while still being delicious and healthy. For lunch, I prefer small, easy, portable meals I can eat quickly in between classes, whether on campus or at home. First up is a turkey sandwich with sriracha mayo. I use whole wheat or whole grain bread, toast it, add sriracha sauce, mayo, mix it up together. I use sliced turkey breast. I like the black pepper kind. I roll them up and using two to three slices. 
Then I add some additional black pepper to give an extra kick. It's also a really good antioxidant. And then lastly, I add some spinach. It's a really easy meal that is just so portable, hits the savory spot, and is pretty healthy, especially if you use alternative mayo. Next up is kind of unique. It's a strawberry spinach salad. I had something like this years ago at a family friend's party, and it always stuck with me because it was so unique and delicious. Something I didn't really think would go together just went together great, so I was inspired by that. For the base, you'll need spinach, obviously, and then um, some feta cheese to sprinkle it on top. Next, you'll need some strawberries, uh, fresh or frozen, but make sure they're washed if they're fresh. Then cut them up into slices. Um, I like to do quarters or slivers. I think that's a good amount, but you could add less. Then I like to add some walnuts or almonds. Walnuts are such a good source of omega-3s. You can see I went through that bag. They're so delicious. Probably my favorite nuts. Um, a little bit more feta if you want. And I like to use balsamic vinegar to tie things all together. But you can also use a puree of fruit uh, mixed with vinegar or just a puree on its own if you like more sweet. And yeah, that's the finished salad. It's so delicious. You should try it. You'll be surprised. Ingredients all work so well together. I love to eat this, especially when I'm at home. It's a little less portable with the dressing, but I've definitely taken it on the go and made it work. Next up, the classic avocado toast. I imagine we all make avocado toast a little differently. This is how I make it. Obviously, you start with toast and smashed avocado, but then I put a little bit of garlic powder to add some flavor. I add some black pepper and a little bit of salt to bring out the flavor. I add some flax seeds, some sunflower seeds, and then I slice up some cherry tomatoes to just give it a whole uh, well-rounded heartiness. Super delicious and beautiful. It's pretty portable too. Um, I've definitely taken it to class and work with me so many times, just eating it quickly between class or, you know, during class quietly in the corner. Such a classic. Okay, last and kind of the least thing I eat, chicken Caesar salad. You know the deal, iceberg lettuce, garlic croutons, shredded chicken, Parmesan cheese, and some Caesar dressing to top it all off. Not the healthiest salad by any means, but definitely hits the spot and is pretty good. I'm to choose a winner here, but I have to give the first star to avocado toast for just being an easy, healthy, delicious classic. The turkey sandwich for being so portable and hitting the savory spot. And the strawberry spinach salad for being just delicious and unique. I eat all these around the same amount, honestly. Sorry, Caesar salad. First up, I like this way too much. It's a black bean burger chipotle bowl. So I actually learned this recipe from Black Alati's, and I'll link that down below. But this is my version of it. Um, I use the Guardian Chipotle Black Bean Burger. Um, it had the highest reviews, and you just uh, cook that on the stove. For toppings, I dice up some tomatoes, some bell peppers, but these can also be sliced long ways. I slice up some onions and then pull them apart into their little slivers. Then I fry those up along with the bell peppers to create a kind of mixture until the onions are caramelized. And then I make some rice. Um, it can be brown as well if you want to be healthier. And then I dice up the black bean burger, put it on top, kind of like steak. Add the tomatoes, the uh, some avocado diced up. And then I add that um, now caramelized bell pepper onion mixture. Then I top it off with cilantro and some taco seasoning mix, which gives it a bit of extra flavor. And I do, I mix it all up together. Um, then sometimes I add some pico de gallo and also black beans. Um, I didn't have a can opener yet then, so don't judge my can opening. And then one final mix, mix it all in. And that's it. It's done. It's super delicious and good. I eat this like all the time. It always hits the spot. It has so many like fresh ingredients in it. It just tastes so delicious. I highly recommend. It's really not tough to put all together once you get the hang of it especially and it can be topped up with cheese as well, um, lime, and I also learned how to make cilantro lime rice shortly after this. We just put in cilantro and lime uh, and so that's really good with that too. Very good fake Chipotle. I would say it's even better than Chipotle and just a great dinner option. Next up is also a little bit unique. It's tilapia with mango avocado salsa. This dish was inspired by when I lived in Equatorial Guinea and my neighbor caught a huge fish and she shared it with everybody. And my sister made this mango avocado salsa to go with it and it just went together so well even though you didn't really expect it to. 
I buy the tilapia frozen in bulk from Whole Foods. It's cheaper than buying it fresh. After I thaw it, I soak it in lemon juice, olive oil, salt, and black pepper, and then fry it on both sides for four minutes until it's flaky and pulls apart. I make some rice, and then I make that avocado and mango salsa I was talking about. That's basically just that with red onion and lime juice, but I'll link a recipe down below. And there you have it. I like to take the salsa and eat it with every bite of the fish. It really complements it and just makes it overall taste great. An alternative to making your own mango avocado salsa is just buying mango salsa, which they sell at Whole Foods. Because mango can get a little time-consuming and tricky to cut up, this is a faster, easier way to do it, and mango still pairs really well with tilapia. Either way, try it and let me know what you think. Next up, we have a simple lentil pasta. So they sell lentil pasta at Trader Joe's, and it's a great alternative to just normal pasta, healthier with protein in it. It's also really easy to take on the go. Sometimes I would have these late nights on campus, and I would need to bring both lunch and dinner, and my favorite meal to bring to go is pasta. It's just so simple and easy. It's really reheatable as well. And just as many options as normal pasta, you can change up the sauces, add spinach, tomatoes, add chicken, and change up the noodles. It's just like a classic but reinvented and healthier. Last up, and one of my favorites, is mapu tofu. So this is actually really simple and quick to make. You just need some silken tofu that's a really soft kind. Boil it until it's hot, drain it, and then put it in a bowl. Add some soy sauce, sesame seed oil, and chili oil. I got this one from Whole Foods and then top it off with some green onions and adjust to taste. I'll put a link to the recipe down below. I forgot the exact measurements as I've just been eyeballing it. I've made it so many times. It's really great if you love Chinese food. Okay, well that concludes our dinners. I'm gonna crown the winners the Chipotle bowl and the Mapu Dofu. It's just the perfect balance between convenience and deliciousness, and those are the ones I definitely eat the most frequently for that reason. Okay, well that concludes the end of my what I eat in a week video. Over here I have laid out for you just an overview of the repeat ingredients I use, most popular being spinach, avocado, berries, and the seeds slash nuts. Um, I think that having ingredients repeat just gives you more option and it's something that I really like to think about. Actually, this idea first came to me when I was creating this meal plan, um, which was originally the basis of these meals. I just sat down and I thought of, you know, some recipes, some, I did some research on recipes because I really wanted to, you know, have a set routine of meals that were overlapping in ingredients just to make things simple, easy, and this is what I came up with. So I've strayed a little bit since then. Actually, I forgot to mention that I do eat oatmeal in the morning a lot as well. For some reason it slips my mind, but it is on this meal plan. Feel free to take a look at that. That was the basis of it, but now I've taken some more creative freedom and I switch up the days or sometimes add in an extra meal. This was where it all started from and it has turned into this what I eat in a week that I just showed you. So I hope you enjoyed my what I eat in a week video and let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you try any of these recipes, I would love to hear. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.